This is Detroit, and this is big fight time. The Joe Lewis Arena, Nassim Hamed there meeting Cesar Soto tonight. A dangerous opponent we know already, but Nassim's bigger struggle is to prove to America that he really is the star he promised to become. And in this hall tonight, we're going to know a great deal more about where Nassim's long-term destiny as a boxing star really lies. The long-awaited featherweight unification match, WBO and WBC versions of the crown, two world champions going into this big fight with all the baggage you might expect and all the tension that focused on the weigh-in. It was all chaotic and quite ridiculous. Confusingly, there were two sets of scales provided. Naz weighed in without problems. But on the electronic digital scales, Soto was over the nine stone featherweight limit by 13 ounces. Even though on the other scales, old fashioned ones provided by promoter Cedric Kushner, he was bang on the limit. The problem was that those scales were not necessarily accurate because they hadn't been calibrated. Amid protests, Soto was allowed to get away with it, and Naz was furious. All I want to know is how can a guy get on the scales right, weigh a pound over the weight, come off it, and the supervisors or whoever tell him, no problem, that's all right, you're 26, you want 26. That don't happen in England, that don't happen in any of my career, I've never seen that in my life. Now listen, I ain't mad. Because I know, I looked at his body, he's no way in the same condition as I am. No way, you've seen it for yourself. Right? I don't care now, it's gone. That's one pound I've given him. All I want him to do is struggle and make, give him pain to get that one pound off. Because that's what he deserves. He never made the weight. Never made the weight. Now, he must fall. Oh. The fact that we had two set of scales, something that I am never experienced before and it should never again be permitted to happen so one set of scales was about a half a pound difference than the other and so in, in one case uh, Soto made weight on one 126 and the other ones he was maybe a half a pound over and as a result of that naturally the scene <laughs> felt that that's the one he wants to go by is the one that's where Soto was all over and but the fight would go on it, it's not going to be any problem Soto never was required to weigh in again, when by rights, he could have lost his WBC crown on the scales. It was a fiasco. See, people will look at that, won't they, from the outside of boxing and say, well, it all looks a bit dodgy and looks like they're making up the rules as they go along. Well, that's, that, that's, we've been using these uh, rules for 25 years in the state of Michigan, and, and Cedric Kirchner did bring in the scale. So the fight is on, and it is for the two championships, as far as you're concerned? Yes. Duke McKenzie, a fiasco or just something that we just put down to the way they try to sell just hard a big sell. fight? Just hard sell. I don't think there's no, no kind of problem with Soto making them out. I wouldn't have thought, you know. The guy's been training for like weeks for this fight. And I, you know, it would be totally unprofessional on his part to come in like 13 ounces over the way. I don't think that's, uh, I don't think it's just, it's, it's just nonsense. You almost suggested to us, I think on Thursday, that it may well happen because we have a WBC champion sure. with all the, the kudos that surrounds the WBC title on one side and Nassim, who's the WBO champion on the other, and they both are fighting for turf, if you like. Sure. What I'd like to know is where, where have these two separate independent pairs of scales come from? You know, surely the, both the boxing commission should have come together to supply one official scales like they do at every other fight. I mean, I've never heard of, like, two sets of scales being supplied at, at any championship fight. Chris Eubank, what did you make of what you detected there in, in Nassim Hamid's mental state, his readiness? Well, you see, now, Bob Arum being the promoter who looks after Thoto would have it, though. Nassim would be a little bit upset in regards to what happened with the with the, um, the scales. Now that is the job of the promoter to actually use his 30% of influence before the fight starts and, 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 and that's, that's why I, I, I explained to Riath and as his brother that he should have Barry Hearn watching, watching his back because I don't think Cedric Kushner, um, comparing to Bob Arum, have the power that Bob Arum does. And you see, in Naz actually biting and talking about it, it's a little distraction. And that's all the promoter of Soto wants to do, is to slightly distract him, which is all, it's all in the business. The fighter takes care of about 70% of the fight. When he's in front of the, 
the, the man he's fighting, he takes care of that, but that's only 70% or, or, or 60%. The promoter takes care of the other 30 or 40% in regards to mental, mental, um, mental games, if you will. Fascinating. Thank you. Let's get Lennox Lewis' version of events now. He's with Ian Dark in Detroit. Thank you, Paul. Well, it's freezing cold now in Detroit outside the arena. The build-up still going on here. And by the miracles of modern science, we can whisk you a little way across America to the Pocono Mountains in Pennsylvania, where Lennox Lewis, of course, is preparing for his big rematch with Evander Holyfield, which is just three weeks away now. And, of course, Lennox has been uh, working alongside Prince Nassim Mohammed in the build-up to his fight. So, uh, good evening to you, Lennox. Good evening. How are you doing? Very well indeed. Now tell me, uh, what's it been like working alongside the Prince? It's been great. Uh, he's uh, definitely added some excitement to my camp because I've been up here like about six times already and it's great having him up here because we kind of feed off each other and he's just got some great energy and uh, you know, it was a great having, having him up here at camp with me. Before we talk about you and your build up with Holyfield, what do you think is going to happen here tonight in the fight against Cesar Soto? Uh, Soto is going to get beat up. I mean, Prince is looking better than I've ever seen him. I mean, this uh, coming, to, coming to my training camp and working alongside with me, it, it just made some uh, avid improvements in him. He just, he's just had some great energy, feels great about it, and I know he's going to bust him up. Did you ever think of uh, maybe just breaking training for one day and flying to Detroit? I was thinking of it, but, uh, you know, my mother and uh, two, of my, uh, two of my friends went. Uh, alongside her to, uh, to add some support. Now then, tell me, how's your build-up going to the Holyfield fight? I hear you're looking very sharp. Well, I feel good. I'm feeling very confident. I'm very focused. Um, you know, I've been in training camp for uh, quite a while now, and it's not somebody that I I'm boxing uh, that I don't know. I've been in the ring with, a, uh, with him already, so I know what to expect, and I know what I'm training for. Holyfield's been saying that he knows what he did wrong the last time and the next time it'll be different, but is that all just pre-fight talk? What do you think? He's, he's, just, talk, he's just talking, Gil. He doesn't, he doesn't live up to reality, he doesn't speak reality. All I know is in deep trouble in this fight. Are you looking this time, to put it beyond all doubt, so there is no judging controversy, to knock him out this time? Is that your plan? Yeah, I'm going to knock out Evander Holyfield. Uh, my main goal is just to go in there and win, and if a knockout presents itself, I'll definitely take advantage of it. I'm looking to step up the pace a bit more and uh, see if he can deal with my onslaught of punches I'm going to be giving and to a quick him. And a quick word, Lennox, too, about Mike Tyson. He wants to fight you as well uh, after the Holyfield thing. Is he still part of your agenda, Tyson? Well, Mike Tyson has to keep himself quiet right now. He has to get through his next fight. Right now, I'm thinking of Evander Holyfield and my undisputed belt. Okay, nice to talk to you, Lennox. Thank Thanks you. a lot. All right. There we are. He's going very well indeed. And uh, the build-up goes on here. We're looking forward to Naz and Soto. It's getting ever closer. Back to you, Paul. Only three weeks to Lennox Lewis against Evander Holyfield as they meet again for the undisputed world heavyweight title. This is a special event on Sky Box Office on November the 13th. Before that, on Saturday night this week, Mike Tyson returning against all in Norris. You can see it with us from midnight on Sky Sports Extra. And before that, Richie Woodall against Marcus Baer for the WBC World Super Middleweight title. Saturday fight night from 10 o'clock on Sky Sports 1. And they're all out of their place in history, of course. Nassim Hamed would love to be regarded as one of the finest featherweights of all time. He believes he's on course to do that and join with this selection of some of the true greats. Henry Armstrong, Homicide Hank, world featherweight champion in the 30s, simultaneously also held titles at lightweight and welter, a span of 21 pounds. But some say Willie Pep was the greatest ever. He had 242 pro fights before losing three out of four against Sandy Sadler. It was the Mexican legend Vicente Saldivar who won the title at 21, the first of two reigns. Alexis Arguello won the WBA title in 1974 and became a three-weight champion. Danny Lopez, a thunderous puncher who held the WBC title for four years. Salvador Sanchez, the man who took his title, age 21, but sadly he died in a car crash. His main WBA rival of the time, Eusebio Pedroza, who made 19 defences before losing to Barry McGuigan. And then there was Azuma Nelson, the WBC feather and super featherweight champion from the 80s. It's quite a list, and no McGuigan I see there. 
And Nicky Piper also points out no mention of the Welshman, Jim Driscoll, who was the first, gr well, one of the first great stars in Welsh boxing before the First World War. Yeah, he started off at uh, lighter than that, but yeah, he was a great, uh, great fighter, great boxer, and um, he's remembered by a new statue in Cardiff, so he'll always be famous. Your division, Duke. Who else should have been on that list for you, apart from Mackenzie, so, of course? Well, I didn't actually win the featherweight championship, <laughs> so, you know. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. I think, um, obviously, Brian McGuigan is an out was an outstanding featherweight champion of, of, that, of our modern era, you know? Certainly for me. To this point, where does Nassim Hamid come in all of this? Does he come close to being on that list? Not yet, no. Because of some of the names you just mentioned there, Salvador Sanchez, Azuma Nelson, you know, Danny Little Red Lopez, those guys are like, they're icons in this sport, you know, they're just real special fighters. They've beaten some of the best fighters in that weight division. And ha Naz, for me, just, just, just not yet, just hasn't beaten some of the, the top featherweights in the world. So tonight, this is about beating, you know, on paper at least, his rival, his equal. Nassim Mohamed, let's remind ourselves, has already won two versions of this featherweight title. They didn't last long as a unified championship, but he beat Tom Johnson to become IBF champion as well as WBO champion. One of his best performances, I'm told, by those who know Nicky. Would that be fair? Yes, I think so. And the uppercut that uh, he finished Johnson off with is uh, absolutely fantastic. But he, he's always um, open to, to counters and uh, he's got to be very careful. I'm, I'm hoping tonight we'll see a more polished performance, back to the good boxing ability. Chris, sure. was this uh, Nassim Hamid at or near his peak to date? at this time, uh, going back no, a couple of years? No, no. I, I mean, this peaking idea that the uh, so-called experts talk about, I, I don't understand. You know, sometimes you perform well and sometimes you don't. I mean, for the critic to expect a fighter to um, uh, uh, perform uh, wonderfully or fantastically every fight is, is really un unrealistic. Um, yeah, I, I believe Nav has the potential um, and, and the wonderful thing about boxing, I suppose, for the enthusiasts, is that um, you will be asked to, sh to, to, to bear your soul. Mm. Y you will be asked to prove yourself um, by a fighter in the ring at some point. Um, no man steps into to, to water or hot water and gets his feet uh, 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 and not get his feet wet. Duke McKenzie, just relive with us your world title match against Cesar Soto. We referred to it slightly earlier in the evening. Mm -hmm. This was the second of your world title wins. This for the WBO bantamweight That's title right, from yeah. memory. This was... Um, 1991. Yeah. And he was only a, a boy at this stage, or a little more than that. Oh, yeah. He was in my face pretty much for the whole fight, but... You're only a I'd, kid yourself, Well, course. yeah, I was just a spring chicken, you know, but I... I could. Thin chicken, I, I yeah. <laughs> and now I'm a fat chicken. You know, I'd, I tried to box when he wanted to fight and fight when he wanted to box and just gave him a lot of lateral movement. Uh, just used my brain pretty much and just outmaneuvered the guy when I really needed to. He caught me with some fabulous right hands. So, and uh, like I say, the salvo of punches that he's trying to unload on me there at some was just a little bit too much, but you know, I just I did what I had to do to win. All for the winner and still and the you did. victory. But you know, that, that, was, that was on my part. Uh, not only was it a good fight, obviously, for me, but a, a fabulous bit of matchmaking. Cause a clear victory, though, uh, as well. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Pulled it off. And, um, but like I say, it was a nice bit of matchmaking by my then manager. And we knew it was going to be a tough fight, even before the, you know, obviously before the fight. Here's how our experts tonight see Nassim Hamid against Cesar Soto. Soto now in his prime at the age of 28, of course. But all our team believe Nassim Hamid will unify again, this time becoming WBO and WBC champion. Ian Dark, Nicky Piper, Barry McGuigan and Jim Watt all going for the long route by points. Glenn McCrory and Adam Smith by stoppage. We've had lots and lots of faxes and emails throughout the evening. I'm just going to give you a sample of the public opinion on this fight. Andy and Chris have been in touch serving with the British Army in Germany. Nazim has got to produce his best, they say. He'll pull out his experience for this one and he will beat him in the third, or at least they hope that. Nazim Mohamed is destined for world superiority and will turn out the lights for Soto in round seven. Steve Davis from Newcastle, Nicola Parnell from Manchester. Nassim will win in five rounds. His speed, agility and pace will be too much for a one-paced Soto. Nassim Mohamed has taken the wrong fight against Soto, says Damian Jones. Hamed will be knocked out by a left hook in the seventh round from Soto.
Does he know something we don't? <laughs> <laughs> I think he told us all about the fight there. Prince Nassim will be introduced to the harshness of reality, says Pete Nordstedt from Peterborough. Soto to win by knockout in the tenth round. So it's by no means all one way here. Uh, fight prediction here from Mark in Oldham. Soto's sheer volume of punches will take their toll. A tenth round KO in favour of Cesar Soto. And Sam Shearer, 14 years of age from Bristol, Nazim Hamed will win by knockout or TKO in eight rounds. But it's been a very mixed set of opinions so far, even though our so-called experts think that Nazim Hamed will take another step forward tonight. That coming after our first scheduled world title match, which is not far away now. And this will feature the brilliant Eric Morales, the youngster from Mexico, WBC World Super Bantamweight champion, up against Belfast's Wayne McCulloch. Two world champions head to head now at featherweight, WBO and WBC. And for Nassim Hamed, his chance to take the big step in America and prove what he's been telling us on this side of the Atlantic for the last five years, that he is one on his own. What sort of a fight is this one going to be, Chris Eubank? There will be a result at the end of this one. Um, you mean there won't be a draw here tonight? No, no, this is not a drawing fight. N Nav, um, the, the biggest problem Nav has is, is that he wants to look good. He shouldn't concentrate on trying to look good. He should concentrate on winning the fight. Now, Nav is going to have to use that very unorthodox uppercut he uses. He's going to have to come through the middle. This fellow will follow him everywhere and he will continue to follow him. Now, we don't know of this fellow's constitution. He's never really been knocked down. He's never been knocked out. He'll be there in the later rounds. And so Nav is going to look good for the first two, three, four, five rounds. Perhaps he can stop him in these early rounds, but in the later rounds, this fellow will be pressing. Watch for Soto's left hook to the body. Nav does carry his arm sometimes out of sync in regards to his rib cage. Watch for the left hook to the body. Watch for the double left hook of Soto where he goes to the body and comes up to the head. And watch for Nav's. Nav will be, I, I expect, brilliant uh, to begin with in regards to speed. Uh, 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 and, and, and precision, but after six rounds of a man continually pressing you, that's where it may get extremely tough. And also watch for the winging punches that Soto throws, overhand right, overhand left, some long shots. Nath has a tendency to get caught because he leaves his head up high when, when backing out. As he gets caught, as I watched um, the fight he had with Kelly uh, just yesterday, uh, when he got caught going back, he was momentarily out and recovered well before he hit the ground and, and, and then got up obviously and went on to, to, to stop Kelly. A very interesting fight. Nav has it all to do and it's going to be tough. Cesar Soto, Robert McCracken, for you, is he equipped to take Nassim Hamed's title off him? Of course he's equipped. Um, it's, as I said earlier, it's, it's deep waters now for Nassim Hamed with, you know, Soto, Morales, Barrera, etc. I expect Nassim Ahmed to have prepared properly. I think he knows what he's up against. I do expect him to win, but it's... This is Detroit, and this is big fight time. The Joe Lewis Arena, Nassim Ahmed there meeting Cesar Soto tonight. A dangerous opponent we know already, but Nassim's bigger struggle is to prove to America that he really is the star he promised to become. And in this hall tonight, we're going to know a great deal more about where Nassim's long-term destiny as a boxing star really lies. The long-awaited featherweight unification match, WBO and WBC versions of the crown, two world champions going into this big fight with all the baggage you might expect and all the tension that focused on the weigh-in. It was all chaotic and quite ridiculous. Confusingly, there were two sets of scales provided. 
Naz weighed in without problems. But on the electronic digital scales, Soto was over the nine stone featherweight limit by 13 ounces. Even though on the other scales, old fashioned ones provided by promoter Cedric Kushner, he was bang on the limit. The problem was that those scales were not necessarily accurate because they hadn't been calibrated. Amid protests, Soto was allowed to get away with it, and Naz was furious. All I want to know is how can a guy get on the scales right, weigh a pound over the weight, come off it, and the supervisors or whoever tell him, no problem, that's all right. You're 26, you want 26. That don't happen in England. That don't happen in any of my career. I've never seen that in my life. Now listen, I ain't mad. Because I know, I looked at his body, he's no way in the same condition as I am. No way, you've seen it for yourself. Right? I don't care now, it's gone. That's one pound I've given him. All I want him to do is struggle and, make, and give him pain to get that one pound off because that's what he deserves. He never made the weight. Never made the weight. Now, nah, he must fall. The fact that we had two set of scales, something that I have never experienced before, and should never again be permitted to happen. So one set of scales was about a half a pound difference than the other. So in, in one case, uh, Soto made weight on one, 126, and the other ones he was maybe a half a pound over. And as a result of that, naturally, the scene <laughs> felt that that's the one he wants to go by. It's the one that's where Soto was all over. And, but the fight would go on. It, it's not going to be any problem. Soto never was required to weigh in again. When by $5,000 to put together. See, it's to me. When I do what I do, I do what I'm doing, but I'm doing it like I'm doing it for TV. <laughs> Well, all this is going on. Cesar Soto, who knows all about Nassim Hamed ring entrances, just stands there quietly. He says he's prepared to do it for half an hour if necessary. Might be that long as well. is all part of Nassim Hamed's psychological preparation. Well, Liam, there's a sign on the wall in the crong which says, attitude, a little thing makes a big difference. Well, Nazim Hamad, he has it in abundance. Of course, the Americans love this kind of showmanship. That's why he's become big news over here. This time, the build-up in America has all gone right. But will the fight go right as well? He's trained properly, his media relations have been exemplary, he's matured, he's even shown humility. But what about the ring performance? It'll all count for nothing unless he can go out and really prove himself with a big performance tonight against this Cesar Soto.
I don't think he's ever been more comfortable in America than he is here in Detroit. And should he come through okay tonight, I think he might be back here as well for future title fights. Big support from the local Arab population who bought many of the tickets. And as is Yemeni background, remember. And they've done an old-fashioned sell of this fight locally too. It's a very fascinating one. And our MC is Michael Buffer. When his microphone starts to work, it will be anyway. And Cedric Kushner Promotions and Prince Promotions Incorporated. Assalamu alaikum. Along with your undisputed, undefeated king of beers, Budweiser. Proud to be your bud in association with Top Rank Incorporated. Present champion versus champion. 12 rounds of boxing for the featherweight championship of the world. Sanctioned by the State of Michigan Boxing Commission, along with the WBC and the WBO. Michigan Commission Chairman David Sebastian, physicians at ringside, Dr. Ralph Sachs, Dr. Evan Ferris, timekeeper and counting for the knockdowns, Joe Collins and Dale Kalinowski. WBC President Jose Suleiman, WBC Supervisor at ringside Steve Crossan, WBO President Francisco Paco Barcel, and WBO Supervisor Gordy Volkman. The three judges scoring this bout on a 10-point must system will be Dario Chiarini, Mike Liena, and Chuck Hassett. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Dale Grable. And now for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world from the Joe Louis Arena, Detroit, Michigan. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black with leopard trim. He weighs 126 pounds, and he brings a perfect professional record to the ring consisting of 32 bouts, 32 victories, including 29 by knockout. With two world title belts, he is considered by many to be, pound for pound, among the best in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, from Sheffield, England, presenting the reigning and defending undefeated WBO featherweight Champion of the world, Prince Hesse <laughs> And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red, trimmed with gold letters, and weighing in also at 126 pounds. He has an outstanding professional record in 62 bouts. He has 53 victories, including 39 knockouts, with seven defeats and two draws. Ladies and gentlemen, Thomas y Caballeros de Juarez, Mexico, presenting the reigning and defending WBC featherweight champion of the world, Cesar Cobrita Soto. in the dressing room. Listen to my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Good luck to both of you. Touch them up. So, Nassim Hamed in with a really live opponent in this Cesar Soto who holds the WBC version of the featherweight championship. He's making his first defense, having dethroned the long-reigning Luisito Espinosa. Hamed's 13th defense of the WBO title. He's held it for four years since taking it away from the Welshman Steve Robinson. So what happens here? Can Hamed zip back into his best form after some indifferent performances in recent contests? Will new trainer Emmanuel Stewart help to make the difference? Hands from Hamid. Soto, though, massively experienced. Watching with upper 
uppercuts and left hooks if he gets close enough to land them against the eel like Hammy. Soto has won 30 fights inside the first three rounds. He might even be dangerous early. Soto, very good chin. He keeps that chin very low, and Hamid will be looking to lift it up. Big shots early from Hamid. This man does have a jaw made out of rock. Soto. But he says he feels so sharp, so ready, that he expects to put on a very, very big performance. Cracking right hand from Hamid. Only three men have ever gone the distance with him. He's won 18 of his last 19 by stoppage. Watch the use of the head, warning for Soto. took as well from Break. Hammett, didn't quite Stop land flush. Even Soto's people say he is quite limited and does come in in straight lines, but I think the longer it goes, the more dangerous he might become, bearing in mind the stamina problems Hamid seemed to have last time against Paul Ingle. Well, Hamid staying in close, he's intent on Soto feeling the power of his punch, but he's got to be a little careful. Sordo is a good puncher himself, and Hamid does carry that chin a little bit high. I think it's important that Hamid has it in his head that this might be the long ride tonight. Great stop puncher! Let go of the man. Don't lock it. Don't lock it. Soto looking to rough Hamid up on the inside when he gets the chance too. And it's round. He wants to make a statement tonight in America. It hasn't gone well for him in the States so far. You look in great shape. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Take it easy. Slow down. Mm -hmm. He's not working your magic here. Just start playing with his elbow a little bit. See, so you're shooting all of the big shots. As soon as you start, he's going there. He's going there. He's giving you what you don't get much either way. So I'm playing with him a little bit. You got so much speed. As sooner or later, he's going to shoot one of them slow shots, and you want to catch him with a counter punch. But start getting your range. Just start playing with him. But once you get to study, I tell you what's so different there. Look how intent he was, Hamid, listening to Emmanuel Stewart's words. Well, he's proven himself time and time again, Emmanuel Stewart is the, you know, probably the best trainer in the world, and I think that's why Hamid has brought him in. He needs somebody to listen to, I think. And his advice was to use the jab a little more, not let all the big punches go at once early. Use the speed and the angles. It might be a dismantling job, this, for Hamid. Stewart realising what a very good defence Soto has, so he just wants him to try and bring Soto out of his shell, let him bring his arms out so he can find the gaps in the defences. Tell you what, Soto could be dangerous with the head, couldn't he, with this style of his, comes down with his head almost charging in first, bull-like. As you can see, he's taller quite significantly than Hamid. Oh, big left hand from Soto. Hamid took it all right, but was wide open for it. Oh, goodness me, there was a scare. Well, that's exactly the danger that Soto presents. Hamid just being a bit too confident, waiting there with the chin up and caught with a big, big shot. He might have just managed to ride it. Well, he doesn't want to ride too many more. The danger signal flashing there. Not 
losing his speed as much as I thought he would against this kind of opponent. Not giving him as many angles as I thought. Looking very compact, Soto. You can see why he's proved so resilient in his career. The man who's been fighting since he was 15, his first fight for 100 pesos, about seven pounds. He said he bought chewing gum with it. Good left hook from Howard there. And again, the left hook working for Soto. He's getting closer. And Hamed's defence, not for the first time, looking less than perfect. Sometimes still leaving himself off balance. And again, there's that left hook, a little grin from Hamed. But this hasn't been a bad round for Soto. Well, he's done well. He's managed defensively to stop the Shorter touches from Hamed and land with his own. Defeat. has to be wary of the left hook. So there is a good left hook, and that is the punch that you do look to land against the side One more time. One more time. One more, more time. time. Warning for Soto, and he's going to get a point deducted. It's getting quite rough in there. Liberty's being taken. I gave that to Soto. What about you, Ben? Yes, definitely. I think you had to give it to Soto. He was um, he was the one choked up. Hamed didn't get through with any of his own. Like nearly all Mexican fighters, used to be a street fighter. Comes from a big family. Nine brothers, three sisters. Miguel Diaz, the trainer. Emmanuel Stewart and Oscar Suarez in the corner for Hamid. Another problem for Hamid, of course, is in his last four fights he's had hand trouble. He's hoping that they hold on tonight. There's that left hook. Yes, you were right. He was just going away from it, which would have took some of the power. If he went under that punch, that could have been very destructive could have been the end of the fight that should well have been but it wasn't he did ride it he does have these hair trigger reactions Hamed. here's the third round big featherweight unification match the wbo champion and the wbc champion some people have knocked Hamed's opponents saying most of them were just on the slide when he met them well, this guy isn't. He's right at his peak. He's just become world champion back in May. The problem for Hammond, maybe trying to land a jab. If he throws it, he's going to land a hit against the top of the head of Soto, and that could damage his hands. Soto looking as if he might be dangerous. Little right hand was a good one from Hamid. There were two of them as well. Soto just pushes him away almost nonchalantly. One thing Soto will not be is phased by Hamed's reputation and charisma. counters as Soto tries to come in on him and close the range. But the signs early are that he might really have to work for this. Yes, it's going to be difficult for him to get through the defences of Soto. I think that's his first problem. Soto. Off his head. Off his head. Really looking to get a lot of power into that left, but it didn't quite connect. After all those knockouts in his career, Hamid's last two fights have break, gone 12 break, rounds and 11 rounds. Is this going to be another long-distance affair? First one. 
that takes a bunch of that break and is going to get a point off. Now, Bucks. Well, the referee just seen the first one who lands a punch on the break is going to get a point taken off. Taking down Nonchins. Dale Grable, the referee. Up, he's up. just trying to find the room to get his punches on. Off his head, off his head. Again, okay, the left hand, and he's open for that. Stop, stop, it. stop. Not much in the round, was there? There wasn't. That was a, a close one. Both had a, a little bit of success. There was a lot of holding and pulling in close, and that's what the referee wants to stop. Here they are. Ahmed just holding, just pulling the arms in, just getting it a little bit rough in there. Now you got him stretching and doing a steady, keep working it. He's falling apart mentally because the man cannot think this, but you're doing too many things to him. He used to keep him straight, and yeah. every time he punches, let him miss completely. Keep keep, keep, shot. And keep yeah, turning, y'all. You're bringing him down systematically. Fighting a good Thank fight. I love, that was the best round. And I always know where he is. You know where you did, what you can do what you want to do. So I think you know, important. Well, they seem happy with that. Last round, but uh, Soto looks very much a factor in the fight after three rounds, very much. And you do worry about those left hooks. Some have been whistling past the chin, a couple have been landed. Will he land flush with one? And if he does, what'll happen? Soto has got 39 knockouts to his name in his 53 wins. He may not be a lights out puncher, but he's a helpful one. Fourth round. Getting that punching. head coming Stop down punching. from Soto. Don't push him off, Nas. Break! Break! Stop punching! Hamid could be engaged here in a long, grueling war with this Mexican. It's not the fight, the sort of fight he's had too often in his career. Just dabbed away at his right eye. They seem to take a knock. As if their heads have clashed. No cut. Punching. There was two decent of a cut in there from Hamad. That's yeah. the punch he's got to try and find. Lift that chin up. He may well have to use his speed and boxing skills to do this job, Hamad. And if a knockout comes, well, that would be a Stop bonus. Punching. That's the way it looks at the moment. The referee's having to work hard in these clinches. Neither one wants to let go. Soto getting it with a right hand, and there was an illegal sort of rabbit punch in there as well from him. Break! I'll tell you what, Soto's going to like all this close quarter mauling and spoiling. You'll be thinking that it may slow Hamed down and weaken him for body shots and body attacks in the later rounds. What worries me here for Hamid is he's not proving as elusive as you'd like against this fellow. No, he's got to try and be close to hit Soto. He's not. Soto's got a very good defense, hands well up, chin down. Break, it's break. difficult Stop for, for Hamid to get through to him. And in doing so, he's having to be, stay close. Getting messy. Point. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Point. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Hamid. With a point deduction for unsportsmanlike but. conduct. Well, I think Hamid has been guilty of holding when they're in close. He turned away then as he was holding. Well, he did warn both fighters, but this referee is obviously one to take absolutely no nonsense. There's another little problem for Hamid. Can he keep his concentration and his composure in the face of all this? has the look of a man who gets a little frustrated if that Stop. big knockout Stop. won't come. That was a punch after the bell, and Hamed there wants to engage Soto. Shouted abuse at him, didn't look happy.
but Hamed with a point knocked off. I'm saying at the moment this is not going to plan. No, it's not. He's getting a little bit frustrated by what's going on in there. And I think also maybe the strength of Soto is, is being a lot for Hamed. He's trying to hold in, in close. Holding. Except from how many? Metro, 62 fights. Cesar Soto. The one that was in the sand, yeah, okay. Don't worry about the stamina with him as well. He's been uh, 10 rounds, 20 times or more. A reminder there of the Lewis Holyfield rematch coming up soon. You'll see that on Sky as well. Round five. Black trunks, remember, have it. The red of Cesar Soto. The WBC champion from Mexico and Hamid says he wants that WBC belt. He regards it as the more, most prestigious one. Great, great. But he really will have to work for it here, I think. Manuel Diaz, the mayor just here screaming. He's using his shoulder, and I think he really was doing that, Hamid, in the clinch. He was just pushing his shoulder into Soto's face, so there is a few problems in there for Hamid. And he's wrestled Soto to the floor this time, and Soto's absolutely furious about that. Hamid's got to be careful. What's he doing here, the referee? It's another point deduction now for Nassim Hamed. Because that was something out of the World Wrestling Gotta Federation. He did deliberately up. trip Soto. Get up, get up. Well, things are going wrong for Hamed here. There's no doubt about it. Two points off already, which is the equivalent of giving away two rounds. Couldn't argue with that, really, Glenn, could you? Couldn't. I think the disturbing thing is you've got to read why is Hamed doing this. He's not comfortable in there. Something is worrying him, and he's having to resort to tactics that he doesn't normally do. He's frustrated. And Soto just looking strong, chugging forward in his own way. Hamid's jab is not really being snapped out either. It's a sort of pitter-patter range-finding thing. We're not seeing many of his heavy shots. He's not managing to get off with combinations. Haven't seen any of those corkscrew uppercuts. I suppose there's always the danger too with a new trainer that he makes little variations on the style and you get a kind of hybrid version, but this is better from Hammond. Break, talking break, to some good American it. judges head, beforehand head. and they were saying, you know, Bam. you should leave Hamed well alone. He was unbeaten, okay. He might have been making the odd error, but he was getting the job done every time. What do you think, Glenn? Well, I think if you look at the style of Hamid, Ian, there's not too much difference here. I mean, Hamid, it's very much the same as normal, hands down. You're looking for reflex punches. You know, it's not a different style. I'm just wondering if he's trying to remember a couple of things that Manuel Stewart might have put into his head. Just looks as if he's a character in search of the plot a bit at the moment in there. Stop, stop, stop. So what are they going to do about this? Now Emmanuel Stewart is in the vault in the row in center ring now look at this with Miguel Diaz the trainer of Soto I think Stewart's a bit fed up that his man is the one getting the deductions and I tell you what they're losing it a bit in this corner I've never seen Emmanuel Stewart doing this well I think that's frustration in the camp altogether well, he's not getting he's not been allowed to do the things he normally does and look at this this really is I mean he's trying to he's trying to do a little bit of damage there and that was very, very intentional. He was low, he was at fault, and then he was the one that did the did the throw. And his boots nearly landed on top of Soto as well. It was deliberate. Sixth round. It's a messy fight, but there's intrigue here, all right. With two points deducted, 
the possibility arises around the halfway stage that Hamed might be in some danger of losing his unbeaten record. Here's how Glenn's scoring it. Well, that's how I've got it. I've got a, it would have been a 10-9, but you've got to give him a 10 here with a deduction. So 46-49 in favor of Soto. So not looking good for Hamed at the moment. He's got to try and get his punches on. He can't get his jab working. That's a, a problem for Hamed. Well, normally a good sharp jab that isn't having any effect whatsoever so he's looking for single punches but Soto with a good defense isn't allowing him to get through he just looks a bit flat to me then. yes he just hasn't got that spark but I think that's mainly because Soto is making him look flat it's a good performance from Soto keeping himself nicely tucked up giving nothing away Soto will really be believing in this rough house of a fight which might suit him best that he can be the first man to beat the Prince has just lost that aura of confidence that have characterized so many of his performances. We well, wanted a very good performance here, but again comes to America and he's not getting the performance he wants. He so much wants to be regarded as one of the great fighters when the historians judge him. But he's a long way from that on recent displays. And now, that, that, I think that was purely accidental. I don't think that was a case of Hamid pushing him over. I think, in fact, Soto might have made the most of that, almost football style. That would be wrong if there was any point deduction there. That was six or one half a dozen of the other, no question. But time and time again, Hamid is going very, very low. And there is a great danger that the, the heads are going to clash, especially with Soto's style. He got a little caution from the referee, but he's had no point deduction so far. Soto likes the brawl. Hamed would prefer to be on the outside, peppering home fast combinations, but he hasn't been able to do that at all. It's been a pretty nightmarish opening six rounds, in all honesty. He, he slowed down. For Hamid, in he his first six down rounds with his new trainer. His now. He's out of you in unbelievable condition. Unbelievable. Let's, say, let's go right-handed for a minute, OK? Let's go right-handed for a minute, OK? Yeah. Because he slowed down. What, what round is... Oh, good. We're OK. It's over the first half. So you just take all the rest up going down the stretch. He's slowing down, though. He's slowing down in just a matter... Well, the Soto camp must be fairly happy because they just knocked Hamed out of his usual rhythm. That swagger is not there, is it? Well, it's not there, but I don't think Soto is that happy. I mean, it's a struggle for him as well in there. You know, it's a lot of rough tactics. It's not a good fight. And um, I think they were a little complaining here, the way Hamed pushed them down and maybe the, the right leg or the left leg, did he, or did he look to fall on Soto? Seventh round, into the second half of the fight. No sign of the knockout that Nassim Hamid thought he would get, even against this man who has never been stopped. Soto has shown his durability before as well, lasting the distance with the likes of Victor Rabanales a couple of times. A very heavy puncher. Soto beaten by our own Duke McKenzie when he was 18 years of age in London in a World Bantamweight title fight. Shots up, give shots up. I just like to see Hamid up the tempo a little. Yes, I, I, I thought that the first round was his best round. And Manuel Stewart wanted him not to do that, to be cool and lay back. And that hasn't worked. I think maybe he's got to go all out, try and push Soto on the back foot and land his punches. Well, that's what I meant earlier when I was talking to you about the new trainer and new advice. He's just not doing his usual thing for whatever reason. 
Yes, I think that was a, a definite point with in the first round where he just laid back and was a little calm where the first round he really went to try and land good punches. He's never done that since the first round. Get off his head, get off his head. Step back to him. Shots up, get shots up, sorry. Watch out for her. Break, break. And it has to hope too that his That's stamina is okay after appearing to fade late on against Paul Ingle when he mu boxed much better than this in the opening seventh round. This is more like the old hammer, turning his hand cleverly. Stay off his head. Stay off his head. Still getting a warning from the referee. Stay off his head. He is looking to hold a great deal, Hamid. Looking to tie Sodor whenever he can in closing. Stop! I don't know, there could become Three a bit of danger of somebody getting thrown out here. Low blow from Soto. There's a plenty of cautions, but no deduction. I'm sure something noted by the Hamid. Can't have had two points knocked off. Yeah, oh, again, that left hook. Hamid caught on the ropes. It's turning into a real struggle, this. Punching. He needs one of Stop those punching. rocket launches now, maybe like never before. And that's a great shot, that left hand from Hamid. And there he goes, looking for the old trademark break, uppercut break, as well. Break. Better shots from Hamid. This is better, quicker, better tempo. Stepping it up. Just making Soto look a little limited, and that's Hamed's round, I think. Hey, David! So how's this being scored now, do you reckon? Have somebody clean yeah, it's hard to know how the judges up, might be scoring this because the, the rounds are messy, aren't they? They are very messy. Hamed starting on my card just to come back like into the fight. I had to give him um, the last round. Or the last two rounds, so he's just getting it back, but it's still he's not getting it back good. It's a messy fight. He's looking to hold too much. His his work isn't clean. Yes, that's how I have it. 67 to Sodor, 66 to Hamed. Just starting to pull it back with those last two rounds. Yeah, I've got something similar to that as well, Glenn. Now there's trouble. In the crowd going on, there's a minor fight going on in the cheap seats, the $27 seats away from me. It's only a few idiots involved. Let's watch the real fight. It's much more interesting in the ring. Here's right. the eighth round. I think that's coming from the, the frustration outside. It's coming from the frustration inside. Not a good fight and well, a, a lot of mauling and rough stuff in there. has to do something about winning these rounds now I think he has to get it into his head that this is a 12 round points job in all probability has to do enough to win each round because Soto may well be ahead at this point Glenn and I think so anyway Mohamed Sting in close far too much instead of using one more time I using his, his good movement and letting sort of walk on to something <coughs> good hand speed from Hamid breaks that punch I think there was a lot of pressure on for this fight both for Nassim Hamid and Emmanuel Stewart they admitted as much when I spoke to them in London before they came out here saying they got things to prove their reputations were on the line. So what kind of reviews will they get for this performance tonight? If, now he's gone down the game there. So dope. There seemed to be a body punch involved in it as well at some point, but no authentic knockdown. Just scored as a four. And I don't know whether Soto's maybe being a little bit clever with some of this now, with Hamid having had two points deduction and looking for the canvas. Well, it is a very physical fight, and they are being pushed and pulled about. Didn't see anything illegal from Hamid that time. He certainly deserved that second point deduction he got with the wrestling. This is better. This is what I think Hamid should start doing, just moving his feet a little bit, you know, using the extra speed he has, and let's sort of walk on to something. Yeah. Give him more angles. 
That's better pace. Uses boxing skills. Great, Not maximizing great. the advantages he has over Soto so far. Head. One, more time. One more time, if you use your head, Soto told, you get a point off. But I think this is better from Hamed now. He's fighting a better strategy. Stop, stop, stop. I think that stop. could be a point for Soto yeah. for the head. Yeah, he was warned about it. And so Soto has a point deducted now. The third point deduction for transgressions of the Queensbury rules here. Break! Stop punching! Stop punching! Good little right cross on the inside from Hamid. Again, he wins the round and he's beginning to claw it back on the cards. I think that has to be a 10 8 round for Hamid with the point off for Soto as well. He won the round and an extra point off for Soto for the head work. Makes it 10-8 and I reckon Hamid might just have nosed ahead possibly after that. Yes, I think that's earlier in the fight. This is showing some of the some of the, the wrongdoings that's gone on here. Well, I mean, really has been a, an awful fight in that way. Very, very messy. I mean, Big Daddy would have enjoyed it in there, wouldn't he, in his heyday? Some of the... There's Hammett. the head going in from yeah. Sordo. And then and a I low think... blow as well, for good measure. Did you see the low blow on the end of it? Yes, and I think that's when Murphy definitely had to give Sordo a uh, point off. Nine. Nine. So, uh, boxing's a cool of the yellow card has been waved three times in this contest twice to Hamid and once to Soto this is the ninth round Hamid winks at his corner man. better tactics now from Hamid much better speed from him and beginning to make Soto look ordinary Blood coming now from the nose by the look of it of Soto. Hamid at last seems to be getting it right, but he still has to watch Soto's left hook. He really feels he's starting to get through to Soto a little bit. He looks now much more comfortable. Less of that worried Stop. frown, a couple of winks to the corner. But why didn't he use this strategy from the start? I'm not sure. This seemed to be that he wanted to stand with sort of use the strength and break it a ball. And you know, he's got so many good skills and fast reflexes. It was about this point in the last fight against Paul Ingle that Hamid almost within the space of a few seconds just seemed to run out of energy and those are good shots again from him he does throw the shots from unconventional angles he's on his toes now and a sign of his growing confidence is the little shuffle you have to give him credit he has reigned for four years and although there have been dodgy moments along the way he's always found a way to hold on to his title he may be Great. finding a way Another here man. to pick up the Just WBC yes, title up. as well well I think there's, there's never been a fighter going who just goes through a full career without uh, a few no up, bad moments and Hamed has had a good career and as you said there has been a few dodgy moments but you know, he's come through and he's still a great champion Looking much Stop looser punching. now, Stop Hamed. In short, looking like his old self. Get off him. Break. Soto again lunges to the floor. Go wrestle. Stop. Stop. Hamid wins the round, no question about that. He's outboxing Soto now. Cow. 
fire. But he could have been doing this from the word go. You may have broken his nose. I know you. Huh? Wipe my nose. You've got blood all over you. Let me, let me, let me, let me, said you, you may have broken his nose. Well, I, I think he felt he had. I think he thought himself he caught sort of with a good punch. A lot of blood around the nose. Maybe he just felt in Sordo's demeanor that his strength just slipped with those punches. Difficult for Soto now. But at last, Hamed is using his skills, his quick silver skills. There's his dad looking on. He took a big part in getting Hamed back on the right path with his public relations a year ago. Almost read the riot act to him, and Hamed has responded to that magnificently, it must be said. And the referee still trying to prize them apart. Now he's talking, Hamed, and gets a warning about that. He'd be very wise, really, not to incur the referee's displeasure anymore, having had two points deducted. Absolutely right, but this referee is a tough one, and this kind of fight, the disqualification would not be out of the question. Well, to be honest, I don't blame the referee. I think a, a weaker referee, this would have been a complete farce. The referee is trying to be very strict, but needs to be there. There's a lot of infringements in this fight. Now, does Naz's stamina hold good this time? He's been pounding the roads, something he didn't always do earlier on in his career. He's conditioned himself in the United States for seven weeks. Does he get the payoff in these late rounds now? So he's making Soto look here now as if he's really laboring forward making the Mexican look ponderous still not a great deal of good scoring points a lot of holding inside a messy fight damage underneath the right eye of Hamed whose reflexes get him out of trouble from that attempted left hook from Soto. But Soto missing more and more, and his work becoming ragged, and this is where Hamid's got to look to get his punches on. I don't think these two will be on each other's Christmas card list. One or two boos now coming from the crowd. This is not what they like to see in the United States. As we saw recently in the Oscar De La Hoya Trinidad fight, when De La Hoya was on the run for the last three rounds. They like to see the fighters standing and trading. But Hamid, I think, is using the right tactics now. Because he's landing with the, the better punches. He's made a great deal of them, but he's still all the, the cleaner. And keeping himself out of trouble getting less involved but you have to say is it wowing the Americans no most definitely not this has not been a, a good fight yes, to man. watch to he gets into the damn 12th round it's going to be hard to knock him out relax Habib relax, relax, you know you're making it miss by seven off to the side here but then after that go right to him after that try to try to come up through the middle you understand listen very careful not quick right now two rounds keep to go going, going. and they must concentrate keep now on just getting back w the win missing. in the column well i think that's the important thing he's got to look to pick punches use the lateral movement use his reflexes and make soto look silly and have a you know, have a good last couple of rounds to, to make sure of a win three american judges michigan illinois and california three states involved in providing judges for this contest in front of a very good crowd at this Joe Lewis arena named after the great heavyweight of the 30s and 40s 
11th round. This has been a round favoured by Hamid in the past for finishes. He did it against Manuel Medina and Paul Ingle last time when he was in trouble too. Hamid may have critics of this performance, but sometimes when you're a champion, you have to come through rough, dirty fights like this and show you can prevail. And at the moment, Hamid seems to have things back under control. He definitely didn't at the halfway stage. But again, he just hasn't been able to show the Americans that really electric form. A good right uppercut there. You seem to hurt Soto for a moment there. His legs just stiffen. trying to find the, the gaps to get those punches in but sort of just closes the range down doesn't allow Hammond the chance to work Hammond is having to show a fair bit of grit here there's no doubt about his bottle and guts as a fighter he's shown that in the past coming back against Daniel Alicia particularly in that Kevin Kelly fight as well Classic, but I don't think they'll care too much about that if they can pick up this WBC title and take the thing on from there. Break! Stop pressing! Stop pressing! Watch your hand, watch your hand. I think, to be honest, Glenn, he'd be relieved to get away from this with the win, won't he, Hamid, now? I think he will. It's just been a, a tough night. You know, he hasn't been getting going in any way. The punches haven't flown. He hasn't found the gaps. And I think the win will be foremost on, on all their minds. Hammett has taken control, though, in the second half of the fight. With improved speed and fluency. Still will be interesting to see how judges score, because this fight, there hasn't been a lot of clean punches thrown. It's really open to interpretation. And the American judges do tend to score a bit more for aggression. They might like the walk-forward style of Soto, even though he's not been landing very much, to be honest with you, in the second half of the contest, after many successes with the left hooks early on. And again, look at this, he's wrestled to the floor once again. Crowd not liking it, Hamed picks him up here, worried about what the referee might say, and oh, this is all getting a bit ridiculous, isn't it? I think they want to have a love-in over there this time. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> well, I'm not sure what that's all about. No, I'm just trying to say it's all in. It's all in your it's all in the best possible taste, but it certainly is That's the only punch you're going to knock him out with, trust me. Because everything else, he's got such tight defense. Stay off the feet, I told him to stay off the Clean this last round up. Referee having another word with the Hamed corner. It's been a mess of a fight. No classic, this. Stars haven't gelled very well. But I've got Hamed now in a four-point lead. Well, I've got a just a three-point lead on my scorecard. 106 to 103 in favour of Hamed. But as I said, it's all no interpretation. Some of these rounds with the points deducted could go two points either way. You know, it just depends how the judges have scored them. Absolutely. We're constantly surprised reference Lewis Holyfield and how the judges might see things last round then sharp little right hand but once again really for the third time the fight in America has not seen Hamed at his best there's no disguising that, whatever spin they might try to put on it afterwards. And all of those who will say that maybe he's not quite the fighter he was a couple of years ago. Well, I mean, that would be criticism that could be thrown out. Good left hand there, that looked as if it hurt, sort of. He grabbed on. Afterwards, and almost pulled Hamed down with him. 
was a good left hand too. That was a good shot. He did look as if he was going for the knockdown then. Grabbed the hold of Hamid. Now that this fight as the top of the bill has been completely upstaged tonight by the McCulloch Morales battle which preceded it, which was a wonderful exhibition. I make the point again, sometimes you just have to get through nights like these. Good left hook again from Hamid. Break, break, break. Referee's been the busiest man. Off his head, off his head. Step back, clean. Oh, I'm sure this has really Quick. been a nightmare for the referee. He's had to work so hard in there. I'd have to say he's done a pretty good job as well, Quick. trying Stop to keep him. control of it. Watch your hand, watch your hand. Yeah, he's earned his money. Come on, come on, tonight. come on, bring it up. Got to win it. There have been times when it's resembled a wrestling match. Well, we know we've seen so many fight styles can clash. Yeah. And what Quick. should be on table, a really good fight, just do not gel and become like this one. But this time, Hamid's stamina has Great, held out. Come on, come on. Finish up, finish up. Come on. It's going to go to the scorecards by the look of it, this. Booze ringing Great, around the arena. Punching. The crowd have not enjoyed it. They had such a success in getting the fans into this arena. Good-looking crowd here. But they haven't seen a great fight. It's been attritional, dirty, messy, spoiling. And there goes the bell to end it. Hamed throws his arms aloft. Soto does not. Hamed's camp celebrate, but we must wait for how the judges saw that. I think Hamed did win the fight, and I think he won it cleanly because I think he pulled away in the second half of the contest. Now Soto's starting to celebrate. I think his corner have told him to go through the motions. But you're right, Glenn, this is one that might be open to some uh, interpretations we hadn't thought about. Yes, I think it might, uh, especially with the, the point deductions, it's how, how they viewed them, whether it was a one point, whether, you know, if they scored it uh, for a win, it could have been a two point. There's Harold Lederman's card, he's going for Hamid, 116, 109, quite a, a that's, big, that's, that's big wide, win there. It? That's wide, I've got, I've got it by five points. To him in the end but um i think the mexicans will think they might have done it because soto kept coming forward it'll be like that old uh, fight between Penel whitaker and julio cesar chavez well i've got to buy four rounds for hamid so everybody seems to think that hamid is just getting it well they've already started celebrating in the corner it looks like once again Hamid might have come through. Soto does not look happy. He was the recipient of effectively two points for Hamid transgressions. Soto with a point deducted himself. These are the point deductions. That was the first one. Sporting misconduct by Hamid. Then the wrestle like that. Two falls and a submission. Second point off for Hamid. Then in the eighth round, Soto, use of the head, and a low blow for good measure. Well, he's looking for a bit of applause from around the, the crowd, but not really getting a lot of boos going out. They weren't impressed with his performance. So, uh, are we going to have controversy on the scorecards again here? What has happened? Mayhem, and it's taking quite a time to tot up the scorecards. And it's being lifted aloft. Ignore all of this. Let's just wait for the decision. Here it goes now. Here it comes now. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the Budweiser scorecards. The winner will be the unified WBO and WBC champion. Mike Gliena scores it 114 to 110. Chuck Hassett scores it 115 to 110. And Dario Acharino scores it 116 to 108 for the winner and still undefeated from Sheffield, England. And has got it. He is the WBO, WBC featherweight champion of the world. 
Prince Hasib Hamed. Hamed does win by the kind of margins that we imagined. Four rounds on one card, five points on another, eight points on another card. He wins the fight, but I don't think he'll w win too many rave reviews, particularly in the United States, for the performance in what was a mess of a fight. But give Hamed credit, he did show the grit, his stamina held up, and in the end, he's got the job done. Yes, you have to give him credit for that. He did what he had to do. You know, he's still the undefeated champion. And that's the most important thing. He showed grit, he showed determination. But the thing they wanted to do was really capture the American fans. And they still, they, for the third time, they've come and it hasn't happened. I will say as well, there's no shame in not knocking out or stopping Cesar Soto because nobody has ever done it. I thought it'd go to points. And it has. And uh, he prays to Allah. That WBC belt means the world to Nassim Hamid, believe me. He believes it's the most prestigious. Now he's got two, WBO and WBC champion. Where does the story go next? I'm going to try and get in the ring to have a word with uh, Prince Nassim Hamid, but I think, let's hear, first of all, Larry Merchant's going to have a chat with him from the American TV people. We'll try to tune into that for you. Any moment now. Amid all the chaos, the usual chaos, you know how it is. Here we go. Congratulations, Naz. First of all, the question everybody wants to know the answer to, why was this such an ugly fight? Now, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm, not, I'm not saying it wasn't an ugly fight because it was a very ugly fight. Can, can you, easy, baby, easy. I'm coming too close now. <laughs> The fact of the matter is, this guy made it such an ugly fight. I came to punch, he knew I was a hard worker, he wanted to grab me, put his head in me. He didn't know that I've got a heart of an Arab. I have a heart, a heart of an Arab, a heart of a... Did you feel, lion. you feel he was trying to rough you up to get you upset into his I'm kind of fight? I'm saying, no fighter in the featherweight division is not strong enough to rough me up, but he did. He tried to rough me up, he tried to school me, he tried to bully me, but he couldn't do that. Because I had him, I broke his nose in one of the shots off the clinches because he tried to knock me in the clinch, bought me in the clinch, hit me his elbows, everything. All right, but, you, but there were two points taken away from you. Baby, give me some room. Let's hey, go. Let's right. go. Give me Man, I want to breathe. Go. Let me breathe, yeah. Larry. There were two points Don't taken away. Champ. <laughs> <laughs> there were. Oh, yeah. Warrior. There were two points taken away from you no, no. for fouling. Were well, they deserved? Being honest with you, I. I didn't think there was diverse, deserved because yes. the guy was using his head all night and the referee didn't. I don't even think give him a, a warning. Maybe give but him you one. picked him up and slammed him. him. You know why? Why? Because I needed to show him psychologically my body strength is bigger than his, is harder than his, is stronger than his. And I did that. And it started, it started mentally deteriorating him. Do you think, did you do that to show you weren't afraid of him and to intimidate him in some way? Being honest with you, he just tried to rough me up. And no, I just wanted to show him that he wasn't roughing me up. I'm an English Arab with, listen, it's, it was all God's will. Let me speak a bit, Larry. Damn, let me get a word out, my man. You're too quick to jump. You're always on my case, dog. You're, jive, me you're jiving me. All right, all right, all right. Wait, wait, up, wait. Up. All I want to say is the whole fight was God's will. Whatever happens, I always says happened. But the guy made well, a horrible I can, fight. I can't interview God. I can't you interview can't. you. No, no, you can't. Yeah, you can. <laughs> okay. So what I'm asking you is, were you surprised that in the last three rounds, when he was clearly behind, that he didn't really open up and try to change the fight? No, I did try to open up. The guy, him. 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 That he didn't try to get to you at, at the end of the fight. No, I think he did. But every time I was getting close and I was letting my shots fly, the guy was just like trying to tangle me up, put, put his head in. He was trying to stand on my feet all the fight, watch the tape. But right. he couldn't do that. Right. I've the got a heart of a lion. What are you saying, Will? Did you hear that heart of a lion? Right. Yes. When the fight is over, the crowd boos. You're here to please the crowd. Yeah, yeah. How do you take that? Being honest with you, I'm not upset about it. I may be a little bit disappointed at this moment in time, but what the hell, I'm the WBC. WBO yeah. featherweight champion yeah. of the world. Yeah. Listen, I'm two times world champion, and I can honestly tell the viewers, especially on HBO, and everybody who watched, everybody watched the fight, 
Sky Sports, everybody. It won't be an it won't be an ugly fight, my next fight, because this guy didn't really con he came to fight, but he came to tangle somebody up, rough somebody up. Would you want your next fight to be against Eric Morales, who is a completely different kind of fighter and a fighter who is willing to stand in exchange? Most definitely, maybe, maybe. But I'm out there to get all of them now. You see, I beat him. I beat Soto, who beat Espinosa. Espinosa beat Kennedy McKinney. Kennedy McKinney. But who did he beat? And the neck bone is attached oh, to the head Judy bone. Jones. Judy Jones beat Barrera. <laughs> Thank I you very Kennedy much, Naz. Oh, my God. Thank you. God. Not even out of breath, or so he'd have us believe. <laughs> Ian will try and fight his way through the scrum and get a word or several with Nassim. Chris Eubank, a little briefer than Nassim has been there. Please, how did you see it? Um, the camp that Nassim was taught at in Sheffield, um, these are very, very difficult people to, to fight. They're very strong. I mean, he put the blame on um, uh, Soto there, but the truth is, is that's the way they fight. They turn, they're very hard to hit. I told Nassim before the fight, that's what you need to do. What you need to do. Go back to the age of 13 and do what he was doing then. I'm going to inter interrupt you there, Chris, because I'm sorry, we can see Ian has Nazim, and let's hear Ian Dark having a go with him. Well, here he is, sir, Prince Nazim Hamid. Um, Prince, that's what you always wanted, that WBC bout. It was a rough house, but you got it. But I love my WBO, but yeah, it was a rough house. He tried to rough me up. I won't come into America for nothing. I wasn't away from my beautiful wife and my beautiful kid for seven weeks. It's good to hear that seven weeks and, and basically be not not focused he tried to rough me up and he couldn't do it he basically seen a heart of an english arab this it was god's will that he can't rough me up and i caught i bust his nose with a nice shot baby trust me after six rounds you'd had two points deducted yeah. i mean were you getting worried at that point no, i wasn't getting worried i knew i was going to win the fight i knew later on he was going to slow down a bit but the thing is, he tried to tangle me up and rough me up and use his head and use all his experience, and he couldn't win it. He couldn't. See, every time he tried to do what he did, I beat him, I counteracted him to it. So You gave as good as you got as well. I mean, he tried to rough you, and you came back at him a bit on that, didn't you? When that nice body slam came along, it was like just to show him psychologically, you are not stronger than me. Yeah. You wanted the knockout here. I mean, but Soto's almost impossible to stop. Did you kind of think in the back of your mind it was going to go the points way? I honestly caught him with some great shots, and I thought I was going to drop him sometimes or take him out. But, you know, I've always said it's all in the hands of Allah. This is what happened. End of the day, God made me the WBC, the WBO champion in the world still. And alhamdulillah, I thank God, you know. End of the day, I've come out victorious. The belt is coming home to Sheffield, England. I'm the featherweight champion in the world. Respect to Adidas, Maxim Musso. I train for right, right. this fight, baby. Okay. Well, it, was, it was hard fight for you to shine in, in the way you would have wanted there, wasn't it? I'm going to be honest with you. The fight, the fight itself was an ugly fight, I admit, and the crowd booed, no problem. The next fight, I'm going to shine, and I always said at every fight, but the fact of the matter is, he didn't come to make it a pretty fight, he came to make it a rough house, and that's what he got, and that's how he got dealt with. Still champion, thanks a lot, Naz, thank you. Well, I find it hard, personally, to disagree with much that Nassim has said about his performance there tonight, quite realistic. When we come back... Nicky Piper, Robert McCracken, Duke McKenzie, and more from Chris Eubank. And we'll look again at the key moments, the important final result, Nassim Hamid victorious. <laughs> done it again, Nassim Hamid, now WBO and WBC World Featherweight Champion, a points winner tonight over Cesar Soto in Detroit. We await with interest to find out what America makes of his performance tonight, Nassim Hamid, but surely an ugly win is better than an heroic defeat, and going back over a hundred years, too many fighters from this side of the world have gone over there and been heroic in defeat. Did you enjoy it, Duke? It was a scrappy fight. It was very scrappy, got very That's untidy. a polite way of putting it. Well, it, it was, was ugly, it was, it even that said yeah, it was ugly. It, was, it, <laughs> wasn't, it wasn't pretty to watch at all, but, you know, he's got the result. You know, he's like a dual champion now, again. And, um, like I say, Soto, you know, got off to a great start and then just seemed to go to sleep a little and just allowed Hamid to, just, to, just too much space to just dictate in the fight. Nicky, did you see Cesar Soto in the early rounds as 
the biggest threat so far to Nassim Hamid? It looked that way, didn't it? It wasn't a great fight, and thankfully we'd already had our money's worth with uh, McCulloch Morales. But uh, Soto started the fight in very impressive form, and I really started to worry for Naz, because he was standing in front of uh, Soto, and that left hook, we predicted it in the first round. And the second round, he really landed f cleanly, and I thought, oh gosh, if Naz can't get out of the way of these, he's in for a, a tough night, and maybe a short night, because... Mm. Uh, you know, it, it was looking uh, ominous for him at that stage. Was it even more ominous when he started to lose points by deduction? Well, then he started getting frustrated, and um, Soto was messing him about, and uh, here we see, yeah, you know, he's, he's just hanging on to Nazi, sticking his forearm in Nazi's face, and Nazi's fighting back, headlock, and uh, yeah, they, the ref had no option but to uh, deduct the point. Robert McCracken, how was Nassim Hamed cope with these, coping with these uh, interruptions to his rhythm? I think initially he was getting worried and he frustrated, but then he sort of took it in his stride. And um, I think Soto played into his hands after after the sixth round because Hamid got used to his rushes and pretty much dictated the last half of the fight. Chris, how did you read this? Well, uh, that's the style of the camp, the way he comes from. They, they, they are grandmasters at wrestling, and that's very good. I mean, listen, don't look at the fact that it may be on Koof. Look at the fact that it's effective. Um, uh, with Soto, keep this in mind that if Nav was ever in one place for more than a second, even a split second, Soto would have hit him. Um, Nav uh, um, could hit and move out of the way of being hit because he couldn't pinpoint Nav. Nav is always on the move, and that's why he's such an effective fighter. Big turnaround in the second half of the fight as Nassim Hamid suddenly seemed to take control. Why for you did that happen, Nicky? Well, I sort of ran out of ideas, and I must say, a uh, shock to all of us. The final words from Duke before the fight was, show me a Mexican that can't cut off the ring. But he mm. couldn't, could he? He had no, no idea. Yeah. Nav's just found, Nav's just found, it seemed to find enough range to get out of the way. Once he, once the pace dropped a little bit, Soto yes. just allowed him too much space. You know, look, he's just, He's doing pretty much what he wants here now, Hamid, and I really thought that Soto would have closed him down a lot sooner and it's, got his punches off a lot quicker. It's, it's, it's so but he very, just didn't, he couldn't do it. It's so very difficult. I sparred with Harold Graham many years ago, and I've come from the same, same camp. You can't touch these people. I hit Harold Graham once in three weeks. <laughs> now, Nav is of the same ilk. Um, uh, as was said to him before the fight, go back to when you were 13 years old. You know, you play, you play coy. I expected, to, I, I expected Nev to come up the middle with shots, he didn't, but still very quick and uh, very tricky. One little moment from round 11, the sort of shot that Chris Eubank you were looking for all night. That uppercut. Yes, that's right, up the middle. But then again, not enough, but then it, it didn't seem it was needed because uh, of the effect of. Um, wrestling and uh, and being very quick, very short, sharp shots of which uh, were very impressive. Could you have seen Nassim Hamed losing that oh, fight? Oh, absolutely. If the fight had gone from the seventh round to the twelfth round, like it had uh, the, the previous rounds, yes, Nav probably would have lost the fight. Nav turned it around by getting or going back to when he was 13 years old and doing all that trickery stuff, the unorthodox boxing, which is what he is. Uh, very talented at doing. And as you've so often reminded us so poetically, if you can keep your head when all around, are lo that, that is to say, what, if you can do what you have been brought up to do right. under the pressure, yeah. that marks you out. And yep. surely that's what tonight has proved, that Nassim Hamid can do it. Well, yes. And, uh, but he's, he's, he's in, he's in a, 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 a very hot marketplace there at HBO in America. Uh, it's going to get tough. Robert tough knows the, the scene in America so well, having sparred and, and worked over there extensively in the last two, three years. How will the American audience view that Nassim Hamid performance? Um, the, the general public won't like it. You know, that, that's not their type of boxing. That's not what they pay to see. But if you're Nassim Hamid, he's won IBF, WBC and WBO titles. He's pretty much the number one featherweight in the world. He, he won't really care about that. He's the, he's the champion. That's all the matters. Do you have a view on how the TV paymasters in America would view Nassim after yeah, that performance? Yeah, I, th I don't think so much they'll be critical because I don't think they're, they're really boxing people. I think it's the crowd that boos, but at the end of the day, the crowd doesn't really matter that much when it comes to the TV. Nassim sells tickets outside of the ring, doesn't he? It's not yeah. so much what he does, he yeah. sells mm. what he does outside. You, you know, I just think that, you know, at the end of the day, 
he's the number one featherweight, and, and wherever he goes, the crowd will go anyway. The, the one thing I would like to say is that, um, in, in spite of the fact that the, the table here seems to think it was a poor fight, or not a good fight, this was a very tough fight. Oh, yeah. A very tough, hard fight. Um, uh, and the objective is to win. If they're booing out there, fine, you boo. You just win your match, and that is what the game is about. Duke, if, you can, if you can please at the same time, fantastic. Yeah. If you can't, make sure you win. That's exactly what he's done tonight. But now he's got two versions of the title. Let's mm -hmm. not forget that he's had already had the idea, two, sure. and it didn't work. He couldn't balance and juggle and play the political game and keep everybody happy. There's no reason to suggest he's going to be able to do it th this time. I wouldn't have thought so. I think there was a, uh, something said before the fight about whoever wins will have to vacate one of the championships. Another, is, another interesting point was that uh, I didn't see nothing different there from Hamid. You know, supposedly Emmanuel Stewart had made a, a dramatic change to him, but I just saw the same things that he normally done. And, and to sum it up, Nicky, have you seen any improvement? No, I haven't, but it, I, I, I must take Chris's point on board. It was a very awkward opponent that made Naz look bad, would have made anybody look bad, so it's unfair to judge Naz on that performance. But, like, nothing we could see from there said he's improved greatly. Nicky, thank you. Robert, thank you. Chris, thank you again. Math looked good, I'm sorry. He okay. looked good. <laughs> and Duke McKenzie as That's well. That's what he does. He's awkward. He looks good being awkward. Thank you very much indeed. I hope very much you've enjoyed it. There's lots more superb boxing coming and coming soon. Later today, Richie Woodall against Marcus Bayer for the WBC World Super Middleweight title from Telford, Sky Sports 1, Saturday Fight Night from 10. And that will be followed from midnight by the build-up to Mike Tyson's battle with Orlin Norris. The heavyweight scrap from Las Vegas coming on Sky Sports Extra in the small hours of Sunday morning. Thank you very much for being with us if you have been with us all the way. I hope you've enjoyed it. Nassim Hamid didn't pretend to us that he'd sparkled, but the important thing, he succeeded. Bye for now.